So Pat talked a lot about getting ready. So I'm just going to quickly go over the getting ready that's specific to rapid toilet training. So key, 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 key thing, as Pat said, the most important thing you need is good reinforcers. So we, I'm kind of going to use the terms reward and reinforcer um, interchangeably here. It means the same thing. So for the purposes of this presentation, it's really, really good stuff that this person really, really, really wants. Um, you also need some activities that the trainee can do that can be done while sitting on the toilet that aren't as good as the, the really motivating things. If you're thinking right now, but my kid only likes the iPad, we will talk about that tomorrow because it's a really common question that I get. It's like, but if I have to give them the iPad for sitting, what do I give them when they pee? We got you. See you tomorrow. Um, and then you also need lots of underwear or shorts in the trainee's size. If, if anything, I would recommend skewing a little bit looser. You don't want the underwear to feel a lot like a diaper. It'll help them learn to discriminate. I'm not in a diaper right now. This isn't normal. Um, so air on the side of a little looser as opposed to a little tighter. Um, there'll be no diapers except when they go to bed at night. They're, they're not going in a diaper at all. Because rapid toilet training is in a really focused situation, you, you don't generally need those plastic over covering pants, but sometimes you do if you're, you're doing it at school or part of it ends up happening at school or generalizing to school. So it's good to buy those, but you won't need them right away. So we'll talk about that as we go on. Um, you need tons, tons of their favorite drinks um, and also uh, salty snacks to help them drink. So if the, if the trainee likes and will eat, you know, goldfish crackers or chips or something salty like that, um, you want to have those on hand as well. And if needed for their size, Pat talked about this, a, a toilet seat insert. I like the really soft sort of squishy ones that you can kind of bend or they feel flexible and soft. Those are good because they're sitting a lot in this procedure. You want them to have um, a comfortable place to sit. A footstool, if they're of the height where they need that for their feet to be flat, their feet should absolutely be touching something. Dangling feet are not good for, for 30 minutes over and over throughout the day. Um, you definitely need a timer and data sheets. I'd actually recommend not using your smartphone's timer because then you might look at like Instagram or something and then you'll miss that the kid peed. And so I just old, old fashioned kitchen timer is great. Um, just keeps us focused in, in the modern era. And then data sheets as well. You need to have them pre-printed and ready to go. Those are again a, a available for you um, as a PDF to download. You should have been able to see them in the chat a little while ago. And then you also, like Pat said, What's your reward of choice for yourself? You won't have a lot of time during the day to access these things, but in my experience, knowing that they're coming at the end of the day is a really good thing. So for you, it might be a bubble bath. It might be going for a run if you're one of those people. Um, it might be, yeah, a nice glass of wine or something kind of, you know, food delivery. You know exactly what you're going to order. You know exactly when it's going to come. You got to get yourself through the day because you're going to be working really hard. So really don't skip this, have something special for yourself. Okay, so this is how we set up. Um, you wanna put, I touched on this just a minute ago, but all the fun things that the learner can get for sitting, you wanna have them in the bathroom. You don't wanna run and get anything from around the house. Um, you, you need to have anything you might need during the day, like, like camp out in the bathroom. You need food for both of you, drinks, phone, um, maybe you need a laptop. You need cleaning supplies really close by in case there's accidents, which there will be and should be. Um, you can't be like, where do I, where's the spray disinfectant stuff? It's gotta be right there. Like you have to have that there at the beginning of the day. Um, you need changes of clothes, probably for both of you. Um, accidents again can happen. So just have everything um, really ready, really, really accessible and ready to go. You also, you definitely should have a comfy place to sit for the instructor. Again, the first day or two, a lot of time in the bathroom. Um, and it, at first, it doesn't feel too bad to sit on the bathroom floor or a little plastic stool that the trainee usually uses for hand washing. But after an hour, your back starts to hurt. And then that's one more thing you got to worry about. So really get yourself a comfy spot. So usually, you know, something like bringing a couple couch cushions in or a, a fold up camping chair, depending on the size of your bathroom, just make sure you're, you're comfortable and your back supported because you're going to be there with them in the bathroom a lot all day. Um, we also suggest covering up 
like get, I, I say most of the time you're gonna be in the bathroom, but pretty quickly you're gonna foray out of the bathroom. And again, we expect accidents, they're part of the learning procedure. If there's anything that'll make you, you know, a little upset, if it gets a pee accident on it, remove it or cover it, right? So if you have like an antique, beautiful, you know, Turkish rug, no, get it, get it away. I don't send me your bill if it uh, if it needs cleaning because um, it's an easy thing to roll up and remove, right? And then you just don't worry about it. You don't have to feel like uh, uh, you're stressed when the when the learner's on it during their break. So get anything precious out of the way um, and or cover it up so it's ready to yeah ready to be peed on or pooped on if that happens to happen. And again, get ready. It's a lot of work. It's work with very, very high payoff. It feels so amazing when it's working well, but you're, yeah, it's really hard in the moment. And um, just, yeah, be realistic about the fact that you need to be utterly focused on it. Again, don't answer your phone. Don't look at Instagram. Um, you can't, yeah, get an assistant if you can. Get a helper. All those things, like I said, you know, put put your lunch in the bathroom, have it ready to go. It's it's really nice if you can go, can you bring me lunch to somebody and they can bring it to you, right? Um, I do work with lots of families too where they'll they'll trade off. Uh, like a couple people will get the training together and trade off. And then it's nice also if someone else is kind of knows what's going on, knows the procedure, and you can bounce ideas off of each other, make sure you're on track. I, I really, if you can have a, an assistant, a helper, I think it's a really great thing. But I've also worked with lots of parents who've done this totally on their own, so I don't wanna say it's not doable. It's just, it's a lot. Um, okay, so what does rapid toilet training teach? So pee and poop training are actually targeted together. So I'm gonna go through a a series of procedures here that are intended to teach the trainee both. In some cases though, we find this procedure gives the trainee a really good grasp of pee training, but poop they're not getting yet. So sometimes we, we do rapid toilet training, great, the child's totally getting that they pee in the toilet, but they're not getting the poop thing. They're still, you know, having a poop, you know, late at night or, um, just once in a while they'll go hide and quickly poop and we realize we need a different set of procedures. That's a really hard thing to predict before we start. Most of the time this teaches both. It teaches pee and poop using this rapid toilet training procedure. Again, sometimes, some special cases, you need um, separate poop training. So the long way for poop training that Pat will talk about tomorrow would really cover this. We also have some sort of interesting um, examples of other ways that we, we target poop training. Um, so if you're, yeah, if you find you're doing rapid toilet training and it's working for pee but not for poop, there's hope. There's another less intensive, I should say. It's not like doing rapid toilet training all over again. There's a less intensive way to approach it and make sure that the trainee gets both in the end. Um, so yeah, if you, I just wanted to say this because you'll hear me talk about pee a lot in the next little bit, but I'm talking about pee and poop. Okay, we're going to get into the meat of the plan here of rapid toilet training and what it is. So it has four key components. Um, they are increased fluids, reinforcement for correct toileting, redirection for accidents, and scheduled toilet sitting. So these four things must all be in place for this procedure to work well. To do rapid toilet training and to, you know, do it as it's intended and the way that leads to these amazing outcomes that we want, these things have to all be in place. They're all really, really key um, components. 